WTKR News 3. News 3 this morning starts right now. The polls coming to a close last night. They'll reopen on Election Day this morning where each candidate stands as early in-person voting ends in Virginia. And we've made it to the spookiest day of the year, Halloween. The second one celebrated during a pandemic, what parents need to know to keep kids safe before heading out. Good morning and happy Halloween. I'm Antoinette Elbel in for Aaron Miller this morning. Thanks for joining us on this spooky holiday and the weather not too bad out there for those trick or treaters. Meteorologist Maddie Kirker is here with what we can expect if you plan on heading out. Yeah, good morning. We are talking about a really nice day. And with that said, I've got some gorgeous sunrise uh, photos right now. This is a live look here at the Virginia Beach Oceanfront. You can see we've got the pinks, the blues. The sun is beginning to show itself over the horizon. We also have a gorgeous look here. This is one of our high res cameras. This is in downtown Norfolk. Oh, it's going to be a beautiful sunrise for what's shaping up to be a beautiful day across the region. So as you're grabbing your coffee, get ready to have some fun out there for today. Now, if you want to go out for a nice little stroll with your best friend, I'd definitely grab a jacket. We're looking at temperatures pretty chilly this morning. Upper 40s from Franklin to Ahoskie, 48 in Chesapeake right now, 54 in Virginia Beach, 51 in uh, Norfolk right now, 53 in Moyoc, and 51 currently in Suffolk. Taking a look at the satellite and radar imagery, you can see we've been tracking an area of clouds that moved through yesterday, but thankfully all of this energy that's offshore right now pulled Pulling away from our coastline, lifting to the north, we may see a ribbon of clouds roll through as we head towards uh, later on this evening. That's going to be from the energy rolling over the mountains, uh, but that'll be moving in as we head into later on today. Here's a look at your forecast and your high temperatures today will be in the 70s and we're looking at lots of sunshine, only a 10% chance of rain. We will have a look at your trick or treating forecast coming up in just a few minutes. News 3 is keeping a close eye on your vote for 2021. The polls for early in-person voting officially closing last night and with just two days left until Election Day, both major party gubernatorial candidates are making their final pitchers to voters. Both Terry McAuliffe and Glenn Youngkin have been crisscrossing the Commonwealth. News 3 reporter Leandra Head has more on their visits. Virginia gubernatorial candidates pushing voters to get out and vote on the final day of early voting. Let's go, Glenn. Democrat Terry McAuliffe and Republican Glenn Youngkin each holding rallies throughout Virginia, both speaking about issues that are at the forefront of their campaign. Youngkin speaking about critical race theory in school curriculum. But what we will not do is teach our children to view everything through a lens of race. We won't. And we won't pit them against each other and steal their dreams. McCall is speaking about women's rights. I believe that women should make their own decisions about their own bodies. And a bunch of men should not be telling women what to do with their bodies. When it comes to early voting, there has been no shortage this year, with 1,031,668 ballots cast since September 17th. A big jump compared to 2017 when only 195,634 ballots were cast during early voting. Both candidates are encouraging their base to get out and vote on election day. I need you. I need you badly. Oh, 757 is going to leave this on Tuesday night. Because right now our individual freedoms are being trampled on and we got to go to work on day one. That was Leandra Head reporting. New this morning, we're learning more than a million Virginians made their way to the polls this year for early voting. More than 760,000 people cast their ballot in person, while 270,000 voted by mail. Back in 2017, Virginia passed laws allowing no excuse early voting in the Commonwealth. And ahead of Election Day, according to the latest polls, both candidates are now neck and neck. And the Wazen Center at Christopher Newport University has released their final poll earlier in the week. It has Democrat Terry McAuliffe sitting at 49 percent, nearly tied with Republican Glenn Youngkin, who's at 48 percent. Meanwhile, the latest, da latest data also showing projects other close races in Virginia for Lieutenant Governor Democrat Hala Ayala also has an identical one point lead over Republican Winsome Sears. 
And the race for attorney general is also separated by one point with incumbent Democrat Mark Herring barely holding off Republican challenger Jason Miares. While election day is just around the corner with a race so tight, many are wondering when we'll know the outcome. Last year it took days and even weeks until the winners of certain elections could be declared. The chairman of the Virginia Beach Electoral Board, Jeff Marks, says that shouldn't be the case this year. I'm confident we're going to have the numbers processed prior to 11 o'clock on Tuesday night. OK, to the extent we don't, we're just going to report on Wednesday morning. The Virginia Department of Elections Commissioner Chris Piper says all localities are required to make sure mail-in ballots are ready to be counted prior to Election Day. Last year, that was optional. It's important to note local registrars have almost a week to certify the results of the election, meaning if races are close, the numbers could go back and forth. And it could take time to find out who's officially won. If you haven't cast your ballot yet and plan to head to the polls on Tuesday, remember to bring your ID with you. This is a reminder there are several different kinds of identification you can use in order to vote in person. A few of them include your license, a U.S. passport, a student or military ID, or a utility bill or paycheck dated within the last 12 months. Just make sure your name and address are on it. You can find the complete list of all acceptable forms of ID on WTKR.com. Also make sure to tune in to News 3 and WTKR.com on Election Day. We'll be here for you covering the polls, the results, and how your decision in the voting booth could impact future policy here in Virginia. Still ahead on News 3 this morning, gun violence now taking aim at a family pet. What police say a dog being shot while out on hunting for a deer was no accident. And we had a nice day out there yesterday, but what about today? We'll take a look at your trick-or-treating forecast coming up after the break. From the JES First Warning Weather Center, here's meteorologist Maddie Kirker. All right, we're going to take you out live on this Sunday morning to Colonial Williamsburg. You look closely here at this camera. There's some people out for a nice little stroll on this Sunday morning. Also, another gorgeous spot is in downtown Norfolk. Look at the sky. Isn't that beautiful? As we're getting our Sunday going, temperatures this morning start, generally speaking, in the low to mid 50s. Right now in North Carolina, around 52, 54 for the south side and 50 right now for the peninsula. We got a wind coming in from the southwest at 8. We still have very dry dew points, so nice and comfy air out there uh, in the 40s. Hey, look, there's a plane. All right, uh, let's get to our uh, forecast for the day today. We are starting things off with a few clouds generally uh, right along the Outer Banks, so uh, down into uh, Duck, North Carolina, and portions of the Albemarle, but all of that energy is actually pulling away from us, and you can see we'll watch this area of disturbed weather kind of move off to the east. I think later on today, What's left of this system rolling over the mountains right now could try and squeeze out a shower as we head through this evening. But most of the models are showing that the air is just going to be too dry for any rain to be falling on this Halloween. So let's take a look at your forecast here. This is set at 9 a.m. wall to wall sunshine, not a cloud in the sky. As we head later in the afternoon, you can see that's the ribbon of clouds that try to build in. And again, with that really dry air in place, only a spotty shower or two is in the forecast for this evening. So for trick or treating or anything you'll be doing this evening, look at that. We're talking clear and very quiet weather. Heading into tomorrow, we'll start things off with lots of sunshine. Tomorrow afternoon, same story here. Very quiet around here, at least for the next couple of days. You can see rain chances for the next five days. 10% chance for today. I'm not expecting anything tomorrow. And then rain chances really don't begin to go up until we head into the end of the upcoming work week. Temperatures, though, normal for this time of year is 67. We're going to be a little bit above normal today, close to normal tomorrow. But look what moves in by the middle of the week. We're talking high temperatures, ooh, a little on the cool and chilly side in the 50s by Wednesday and Thursday. All right, but let's get to the all-important trick-or-treat forecast for this evening. We'll start things off with temperatures upper 60s, falling to the low 60s when most of the kids are out there. So a little bit on the cool side. Sunset, remember, around 6.07 p.m. All right, so your forecast for today, a cool start by midday, mostly sunny and a very comfortable and beautiful Halloween. We're looking at highs to be in the low 70s. Taking a look at your three-day forecast, we've got lots of sunshine in store for tomorrow. A little bit cooler on Election Day, 20% chance of rain. Higher rain chances, though, when we cool things down as we head into Thursday and Friday. 
And the forecast, it doesn't really look scary for this Halloween. Actually, the numbers look pretty good until you get into later in the week, right? Yeah, you know, no tricks this Halloween for us. At least what we're giving you, we got lots of treats in the weather. We like to hear that. Well, this morning, we are continuing to track a situation in Newport News. Right now, police are investigating a shooting that injured two boys. Investigators tell us police were called to Garden Drive around 4 p.m. yesterday for reports of gunshots. When they got there, they found an injured boy nearby. Meanwhile, another victim suffering a gunshot wound was taken to a nearby fire station on Wickham Avenue. Police tell us they believe both boys will survive. Now taking a look across the Commonwealth, there's been an unspecific threat of violence directed at soft targets like shopping malls in Northern Virginia this Halloween weekend. We receive information that has a public safety value to it. It's just our responsibility to have a greater presence, uh, to be more aware, and to ask the community to have their eyes and ears peeled. All police agencies throughout the region are aware of this information and are increasing police presence throughout the community. As gun violence continues throughout Hampton Roads, a recent incident severely injured a family pet. The owner is beside himself after a hunting dog. His hunting dog, Shorty, was shot by someone at close range, and police don't believe this was an accident. News 3 reporter Chelsea Donovan sat down with the man to learn more. And a warning, some Charlie Grimstead might... was hunting this weekend on private lands here in Pungo, way back there where you see the dark tree line, when all of a sudden he got a devastating call on the radio that his beloved beagle Shorty had suddenly been shot. Shorty, a hunting beagle, hobbles around on three legs Thursday. His front left leg had to be amputated after a bullet shattered the joint and surgery was necessary. Charlie Grimstead had taken his eight beagles, including Shorty, out hunting on leased private lands when suddenly a shot rang out. A fellow hunter saw that the dog was shot at close range, less than 100 feet, and saw someone run off that was standing just outside the private land. Shorty is okay, but will never hunt again. It breaks my heart to look at him this way and to know that he's got to live the rest of his life like this. He'll probably never run again, but he'll be riding in that front seat with me. He's going to be my shotgun rider. The conservation police are currently investigating this shooting, and Grimstead is offering a $1,000 reward for anyone who has information leading to an arrest. In Pungo, Chelsea Donovan, News 3. And thankfully, Shorty was able to get the care he needed and quickly. But right now, many pet owners are struggling to get their animal in to see a vet for routine visits. It's a story we've told you about here before on News 3. Veterinarian offices are facing the same issue that's plaguing many industries at the moment, a worker shortage. It's a problem that recently forced all the animal emergency rooms in Richmond to close because they reached capacity. All of the ERs in the Richmond area had closed to receiving, which meant that if you had a pet with an emergency, you were having to drive an hour and a half plus um, to find a veterinarian or an emergency center was, that was open. There are about 7,000 openings for veterinarians nationwide, but it's not because of an increase in pet adoptions. Experts believe worker burnout and a backlog of pet appointments caused by the pandemic are to blame. In order to help alleviate the problem, the USDA is looking to identify veterinary shortage areas by November 8th. And speaking of beloved pets, your favorite weather dog, Chester, is joining us live in the studio today. We'll have his four new members of his crew coming up on News 3. All right, welcome back. Time now is 7.20 on this Halloween. I've got so many weather graphics I just love to play with. So let's uh, see what the monsters are doing right now. It is Halloween after all. And the monsters, hey, they're doing a little bit of dancing. Oh, yeah, we're getting all ready for trick-or-treating. That's happening later on this evening. And they'll be excited for how wonderful the forecast is looking. Hey, we got beautiful conditions this morning. Just a little chilly for all the ghouls and goblins out there. Upper 40s in Chesapeake right now. Low 50s from Norfolk to Virginia. 
Beach, low 50s from Williamsburg, Newport News, Hampton. And good morning if you're joining us in North Carolina. We're looking at temperatures low to mid 50s from Manio, Elizabeth City into Edenton. All right, the main event happening this evening, your trick-or-treating forecast. We're looking at mainly sunny skies this evening, tiny chance of rain. And as you can see, as the kids are out and about, temperatures will start off in the mid 60s, falling to the low 60s as we head late into this evening. All right, we are so excited here on the weekend morning show because we have been asking you for your Halloween photos of your best friends. And we have been just so excited about all the wonderful submissions. Chester now in his final costume, one of my favorites, he's a pirate. So Chester, let's see who's on your crew on this Halloween morning. All right, first things first. Oh, we got a clown here. This is Lucy. She is a three-year-old Rottweiler. She loves playing Frisbee and tug of war, and she will do anything for ice cream, including putting on this clown costume. Yes, and you look so happy wearing it too there, Lucy. Thanks to Crystal and Frank in Gatesville, North Carolina, and welcome to the crew. All right, next up this morning, we've got Misty, and this is a really cute costume. Misty is a peacock this Halloween. Owner is Maria Harris, and welcome to the crew to Misty. All right, next up this morning, we have got Jet here. Jet was sent in from Karen Jordan, and you know what? It's all right. Sometimes it's hard to get those big old costumes on, but I love this costume here. Jet hanging out as a pumpkin, one of the most popular costumes, and welcome to the crew. All right, next up, who do we have? This is Baby. Oh, Baby, you look like a ballerina here. Baby was sent in from Teresa Hill in Virginia Beach, and you gotta love the, if you look closely, it says boo there. All right, welcome to the crew too, Baby. Hey, next up this morning, we've got Lyra. Oh, or Lyra. She is so pretty. She's a 10 and a half month old uh, German Shepherd. And I love that she, she looks like Red Riding Hood, I believe, which is even cuter when it's a German Shepherd. Um, love the setup, love the photo here. Thanks so much to Christina. Welcome to the crew. And last but not least, on this Sunday morning, hey, we've got Bear and Lulu here. They're saying hola. And they are sent in from Lori San Juan. We love this photo so much and welcome to the crew. Hey, we want to celebrate Halloween with everyone in our viewing area. That stretches from the Outer Banks all the way up towards the peninsulas. And what we want is we want your pet photos with their Halloween costumes. All you have to do is open up your email on your phone. Email pics, that's P-I-C-S, at WTKR.com. Attach your favorite photo of your best friend. Tell us about them, why they like their costume, or maybe why they don't like their costume this year. And we will get them on TV for next weekend's show. Hey, Maddie, I think that mummy in your graphics stole some of my uh, dance moves. <laughs> I was thinking I really could uh, get some lessons from those monsters. I'm going to have to check back in no, with them in their little I, layer a little bit I later. really like that one. And we love Chester's crew and all those costumes. They were so cute. I love it. And as we know from Chester's Instagram account that he took part in Yorktown's puppy parade yesterday. While that was going on, another costume parade took to the streets of Norfolk. News 3 was there to capture the moment. Many came out for a spooky parade dressed to the nines in their Halloween costumes. These little guys helped raise money for CHKD's mental health hospital. This is the second year for the parade and an organizer tells us about its return. We started this event last year during COVID. We were looking for a COVID friendly, family friendly event to get everybody together, uh, have a little fellowship, get our circle together and also raise money for CHKD. It was such a success that we've done it again for a second year. And if you missed out on the parade yesterday, don't worry. You can still head out for trick or treating with your furry friends later tonight. If you're looking for some last minute costumes, we've got you covered. According to the National Retail Federation, taking the number one spot for dog costumes this year is a pumpkin. And if you saw us earlier in the show, we did have Chester in that pumpkin. And the next one is a dog superhero and a bumblebee and a ghost. If you end up dressing up your pets this year, please send us a picture. We'd love to see them and possibly feature them right here on News 3. Well, taking a small load off of healthcare workers' shoulders during the pandemic. Up next, House and Tara is helping its employees take a breath.
Welcome back. Time now is 729 on your Sunday morning. It is also Halloween. We got plenty of orange here going on in our downtown Norfolk sky cam. The sun saying hello to everybody and it is going to be a cool start across the region. Depending on where you're waking up, you may be in the 40s. So when you step outside, get ready for that. 48 in Franklin right now, 48 in Chesapeake, 48 in the Hosky. A tad more mild in air quotes here for Elizabeth City at 52, 55 in Manio, 54 Virginia Beach, 52 in Williamsburg this morning. Uh, Newport News 52, 53 in Matthews, 51 in Norfolk and Moyock in North Carolina, 52 this morning. All right, and we've been tracking a few clouds out there this morning. You can see them on our sky cam. They're actually moving away from us. The little area of disturbance that's building in later on today is currently set up over the mountains. Now that will lead to a brief little ribbon of clouds that rolls through this evening, which will likely make a really pretty sunset as well, but it may give us a spotty shower again later on today. So I think we're completely dry all the way through one. Here's that ribbon of clouds that rolls off the mountains, moves across our area through about four or five o'clock, maybe a spotty shower for the eastern shore. But other than that, I think we are coming in with dry conditions. So here's a look at your forecast for today. We're starting off in the 50s, 60s by midday and your high today, 71 degrees with mostly sunny skies. We'll have another look at your seven day forecast coming up next. It's another Halloween in this pandemic, but this time around, it'll be a little different. Top U.S. health officials say kids should enjoy this holiday with some precautions in place. Manny Gaither has more. It's that time of year again. Costumes, candy, and unfortunately, COVID-19. A lot of parents um, have been a little frustrated that uh, their kids have been missing out on a lot of holiday celebrations for the past two years. But this year, the pandemic is different, and so is Halloween, according to pediatrician Dr. Gary Karkulis with Phoenix Children's Hospital. Kids can safely uh, trick-or-treat and enjoy some of the holiday uh, festivities, um, although they still need to do it safely. While overall new COVID-19 cases are decreasing across the U.S., the American Academy of Pediatrics says more than 25% of those being reported are in children. Officials say it's especially important to keep safe those who aren't yet eligible for a vaccine. The AAP recommends families stay outside where the virus doesn't spread as easily and trick or treat in small groups. Thank you. There's a lot more outdoor activities that they can do, you know, like, uh, pumpkin patches and corn mazes. A lot of zoos are having Halloween special events going on. So those are all very, very safe activities to do. But if you do go indoors, mask up. All those Halloween parties, uh, we have you know, multiple family members from, from different households, definitely still recommending wearing masking. And you can make those masks part of your, your, your outfit. I mean, you can buy themed masks to match your outfit. Having fun while staying safe makes this Halloween less scary. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. On the military watch this morning, the Hampton VA Medical Center is making another push to get veterans vaccinated against both COVID-19 and the flu. The VA is specifically making the push for the flu vaccine in an effort to lighten the load on already an already stressed healthcare system. To keep more hospital beds empty this winter, doctors say now is the time to roll up your sleeves before it's too if late. If our veterans haven't received it yet, now is the best time to ensure that they're fully protected during peak season. And you can get both your COVID-19 and flu shots at the same time. For more details on when and where you can make an appointment, just head to WTKR.com right now. And especially during the pandemic, too many young people are thinking about suicide. A, new th a News 3 investigation unveils the number of deaths and calls made to the suicide prevention hotline. Experts say there has been an increase in the number of youth calling for help. But what's even more concerning is what kids are calling about and saying. These calls have increased since kids have been back to school. The difference now is it's not just I don't want to be here tomorrow. It's a wish to be dead and it's a wish to act on that. And so we have individuals, very young individuals who have thought about, you know, plans for how they would complete their death. And that's really where we start to get very concerned. Just seeing his lifeless body on the floor literally brought me to my knees. And I feel like I've been trying to stand up ever since. On News 3 tomorrow morning at 6, the heartbreaking story of a 19-year-old David McClung who took his own life in 2014. And then tomorrow on News 3 at 6 p.m., we'll show you how they're turning their grief into action and the warning signs we should be looking for. 
Young people are not the only ones struggling with their mental health due to the pandemic. Many doctors and nurses have been working nonstop for these past 19 months. However, earlier in the week, some were able to appreciate the moments of clarity. News 3 reporter Chelsea Donovan explains. In a small corner of the lobby at Centera Norfolk General Hospital, a cluster of nurses and doctors gawk over a glass table. This one is um, four days. The tiny vibrations of the shock per artist Katie Jo Sudeby is using sort of puts you in a trance as the tool shuffles sand to coat the surface. And it's kind of like a meditative uh, moment. Sudeby is creating sand art in the form of a mandala, a circular symbol using sand to create stillness and a moment of zen for these frenzied frontline workers. It's a reminder that we do need to be still in order to process the emotions around losing so many people to this new virus. Sudeby says part of being involved with the SAN means slowing down and being meditative. Just a moment to breathe and be. Hard to do with COVID patients on every floor above. One nurse's beeper went off as she was watching and she said, oh, right, reality still exists. As the picture continues to form, more stop to admire its beauty. I just love to see how it's coming to life. Sudeby is the only non-monk in the Western Hemisphere to make these mandalas using the traditional Tibetan technique that is truly mesmerizing for those zeroed in. Grains of sand and putting it together and weaving a story and making that story part of our story so that even she is melding with us and becoming one. Each tiny granule is starting to give way to what these medical staff have endured over the past 18 months. You put your all into them, but then you have to let them go. I chose this image as kind of a, a moment of rest. You can tell that like everything around them is chaotic but they get this one moment to just be together. After a few hours, the colors and small crystals start to reveal another type of moment. Two nurses joining their heads. A transformation reminding us not to get caught up in the permanence of any moment. It's easy to just keep going and to think that the that you can work away the trauma. We're worth a moment of calm to really heal. In Norfolk, Chelsea Donovan, News 3. Coming up, we're taking action for your health as we close out Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Hear one woman's journey to battle the disease and how you can give back before the month runs out. From the JES First Warning Weather Center, here's meteorologist Maddie Kirker. Well, it's been nice filling in for April Loveland. Getting to see the sunrise like this early on a Sunday morning is certainly a delight, especially when it's Halloween morning. Let's take a look at some of those current conditions out there this morning. We are in the low to mid 50s. North Carolina at 52, 54 for the south side and 53 right now across the peninsulas. Some other things to note, we've got a wind coming in out of the southwest at around 8 miles per hour and that overall air that we have here in place is very dry. So it is not only a beautiful start, but it's also quite refreshing when you step outside. Uh, here's the latest look at the satellite and radar picture. We have been tracking some clouds right along the immediate coast. That's why as we're looking off towards Virginia Beach from Norfolk, uh, we've got that beautiful sunrise. As we press forward through the afternoon, we are looking at increasing sunshine, but then the later we get into the afternoon, say four or five o'clock, this ribbon of clouds that's crossing the mountains right now eventually moves in our direction, uh, but with the air so dry, I don't think we're expecting any rain once it gets into our area. All right, I'll show you what I'm talking about here with our forecast. This is 9 a.m. Wall to wall sunshine, just gorgeous all across the region. Here's one o'clock. Clouds begin to move up towards Richmond. We still stay nice and clear. Again, here's right around four, five, six o'clock. That ribbon of clouds rolls through, and you can see the model's not showing very much. Again, we're going with a 10% chance of rain for today. Heading into this evening, as all the trick or treaters are out and about, we are looking nice and quiet, mainly clear uh, skies out there. Heading towards tomorrow morning, we'll start things off. Lots of sunshine. By the afternoon, we may see a few passing clouds, but the next couple of days around here are going to be pretty quiet. 
Uh, rain chances really don't ramp up until we head into Thursday and Friday into the upcoming week. Now, how about those temperatures? Because today it's going to feel really good, especially for October standards, the last day of October. 71, normal is 67. We do have some cooler air rolling through as we head towards Wednesday and Thursday. That's when high temperatures will only be in the 50s. Oh, yeah, we're talking chilly. All right, your trick or treat forecast. We're going to temperatures to be falling to the low 60s, so a bit cool for the kids, but I don't think they'll need to honestly even wear a jacket knowing how kids are they're running they're busy so it's going to be really nice and comfortable sunset this evening around 6 7 p.m forecast for today mostly sunny 65 by midday a very comfortable and beautiful halloween your high temperature of 71 taking a look at your first warning seven day forecast we say nice and quiet around here basically through election day through wednesday it's not until thursday and friday of the upcoming week rain chances do slightly increase to a 30 percent chance we're getting closer to those trick-or-treaters hitting the doors to collect their candy and low chance of rain and mild weather. I think it's a win for those kiddos. It is such a win, especially given the fact we could have all sorts of weather around the, these parts, but nice and dry tonight. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Maddie. News 3 is taking action, bringing you stories of survival on the last day of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. News 3 anchor Zach Dalheimer, Dalheimer spoke with a local breast cancer survivor about her diagnosis and dives into local services available to treat patients. This room is pretty significant to you. Yes, it is. September 25th, 2018 may be more than three years ago, but for Lakaja Lang, it feels like yesterday. I was sitting in the chair over to my right, and Dr. Ruiz walked in. He advised me that I had been diagnosed with breast cancer. She remembers one night watching a movie with her husband. I kind of brushed my hand across my chest and felt you know, a raised skin. My husband said, well, let's just get it checked out. She was already on track for her yearly mammogram, but she ended up calling for an emergency appointment. After tests, she remembers the day she got the news from Dr. Antonio Ruiz, no one wants to hear. I thank God I had my husband with me because when I was advised, I literally blanked out. She does, however, remember one message. Uh, he said, you're gonna get through it. It is, uh, you know, so difficult giving this information to, to folks. Dr. Ruiz is the director of Chesapeake Regional Healthcare's Breast Center. I tell my patients I try to treat them like I would want my family treated. I've had family members that have gone through cancer. I've had uh, two that have gone through breast cancer. Um, so it, it's hit home. The center having some of the latest technology to help with diagnosis, treatment, and survivorship, including biopsy technology and a mobile mammography unit. Well, to go out to the community, to businesses, churches, um, and uh, uh, reach out. Ruiz says teamwork is also key. What I try to do is, you know, let them know that it's going to be okay. For Meg Schrader, her passion is personal. I. I'm actually a breast cancer survivor myself. Hearing that you have cancer is never a good thing. Your world just stops. You know, it just really does. And what I try to do is guide the experience. I want patients to have a wonderful experience. An experience helping those like Lang survive and thrive, not just in October, but all year long. I now know every time I step in this room, they're going to put me on the path to make sure that I do whatever I need to do to remain in remission. In Chesapeake, Zach Dahlheimer, News 3. And all month long, real men have been wearing pink. News 3 reporter and cancer survivor Zach Dahlheimer has been taking action in the fight against breast cancer. Throughout October, you've seen Zach wearing pink every single day while also focusing on stories of breast cancer survivors and resources for patients and families. To learn more about Zach's personal campaign and how you can contribute, head to WTKR.com. And a SpaceX rocket that was set to launch today on Halloween has now been delayed due to the weather. It's been rescheduled and will take the next crew to the International Space Station on Wednesday. After takeoff, Navy Lieutenant Commander Kayla Barron and three colleagues will be there for the next six months. Barron has already spent years on a series of groundbreaking missions under the sea. The lieutenant was among the U.S. Navy's first women commissioned as a submarine warfare, warfare officer after living hundreds of feet below the ocean surface. She's about to soar 250 miles above Earth. This is the most dangerous thing I've ever done. 
Uh, for me, being on a submarine felt pretty safe. <laughs> to me, when I look at the space station, I mean, I don't know what other people think about, but I go, that's a submarine in space. I think about that every time I see it. It's got a better view, though. Having windows is a nice upgrade. During their stay, the crew will work on more than 200 different experiments. Wednesday's launch time is now set for 1.10 in the morning. And before your kids chow down on their latest candy haul, just ahead, we're getting some tips from a dentist on how to avoid those Halloween cavities. Here at News 3, we want to wish all of you celebrating tonight to have a very happy Halloween. Millions are gearing up to pass out candy to trick or treaters. And one 12 year old from Pennsylvania is now using his experience of being attacked by a crocodile as the inspiration for his costume. Reporter Howard Monroe has more. I knew it was a crocodile. It felt like a metal clamp just like squeezing super tight on your leg. 12 year old Charlie Buell from South Philly was attacked by a crocodile over the summer while on a family vacation at Club Med Cancun. He was playing hide and go seek on the lagoon with other kids at the resort's kids club. One of my friends, he came up and said he found a really good hiding spot. But lurking nearby was that crocodile. His mother, Jennifer, was having dinner at a restaurant also on the resort. I didn't know if he was alive or dead. I didn't know which son it was. Charlie underwent multiple surgeries while still in Mexico, and he has the scars to prove it. And proving a sense of humor goes a long way. Charlie and his friends are making a crocodile costume for Halloween. It's 16 feet long, and we're going to get a lot of candy. The reason it's 16 feet is because that's three feet longer than the actual crocodile that attacked him. We're told Club Med is helping with Charlie's recovery. They said in a statement they're now making safety improvements to their lagoon area so an incident like Charlie's doesn't happen again. And dressed as a crocodile or not, thousands of kids are expected to be walking outside on the streets tonight. So the North Carolina Department of Transportation is giving everyone some safety tips. Plan a safe route for trick or treaters to follow and establish a time they need to be back home. Adults should be with any kids under the age of 12. Have kids use a flashlight, glow stick, or something reflective to make them more visible. If you're going to be on the road, they recommend driving slowly through residential streets. Keep a close eye out for any kids running in the road. And also enter and exit driveways and alleys carefully. Those suggestions also go for anyone heading, headed out in the 757. Just a reminder, the Seven Cities trick or treat time is from dusk until 8 p.m. And before kids start to chow down on the Halloween candy, dentists have some tips on keeping your teeth healthy. They say eating candy in one sitting is better for your teeth than eating it all throughout the day. Chocolate is also better for your teeth than gummies because chocolate melts so it doesn't stay stuck in the grooves of your teeth. Another, another thing to remember, when brushing your teeth after a helping of candy, make sure to pay attention to the molars between the teeth under the gums and to the backside of your teeth. If you want to celebrate the holiday before the nightfall, there are plenty of opportunities to do so today. News 3 is taking action with three things to do. How about getting some chores done while also getting a scare? The Cool Wave Car Wash in the Newport News is hosting a, a haunted car wash with rides later tonight. Actors and decorations will be set up to give you a good spook while your car gets clean. It runs from 6 to 10 this evening. And ghost tours are back at Colonial Williamsburg. They're happening now, but you don't need to reserve a time slot ahead of time. Heads up, they are filling up fast. Tickets start at $12. There's a link to make reservations on WTKR.com. And if you're looking to get in a spooky workout, Hampton is hosting its Halloween bike ride. The seven mile ride takes you throughout the with neighborhood and begins at two this afternoon at the Armstrong Elementary School. They encourage you to wear a costume as long as it doesn't interfere with your safety on the bike. So Maddie, people who are heading out for these events, going out trick or treating, what are some things they can expect weather-wise? 
Oh, we are talking wonderful conditions weather-wise. Very excited to be talking about that. Here's a live look outside in downtown Norfolk. It has been a beautiful sunrise, gearing up to be a really pretty day across the region. Here's some current conditions. If you're heading out and about, it is going to be chilly. We're looking at temperatures upper 40s in Chesapeake right now. Low 50s from Norfolk to Virginia Beach, 52 in Williamsburg, 52 in Newport News, Hampton 53. And we're also sitting into the 50s as we head into Manito Manio, Elizabeth City, and Edenton. Can you believe it's the last day of October? Tomorrow is November. Oh my goodness. So let's have some fun, shall we? Oh, we are excited. Halloween happens tonight. Here's a look at your trigger treating forecast. We're talking temperatures starting off in the 70s at 4 o'clock. And then as we head towards 6 to 8, we're dropping from the mid 60s to low 60s. And then temperatures tonight will be in the 50s. That sounds really good for those trick or treaters. Before we head out, we want to point out Chester, my co anchor, right here. I met him earlier today. I love this costume that he's wearing. He's just so sweet. Giving you some kisses this morning, too. Oh, no, he's very nice. Soft. He probably smells my little Yorkie at home. But uh, before we leave you, we want you to just take a breath, find the beauty in today, and have a great day.